I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about methylene blue as a nootropic. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Now methylene blue is first synthesized in 1876 by German chemist Henrik Caro at BASF as an aniline-based dye for cotton staining. In 1891, German physician and Nobel Prize recipient Paul Elrich pioneered the use of methylene blue in the treatment of malaria. Elrich discovered that meth when methylene blue was injected into animals in the lab, it would quickly concentrate in the brain and had an uncanny ability to selectively target diseased tissues in the body. It was Elrich who coined the term magic bullet for this unique action displayed by methylene blue. And it's a term we still use today. Methylene blue has since been used to treat dementia, cancer chemotherapy, malaria, methamoglobinemia, urinary tract infections, cyanide and carbon monoxide poisoning. As an atropic, methylene blue is used to enhance mitochondrial function, increase cerebral blood flow, and it acts as an antidepressant. Well, first, methylene blue improves memory. Now, unlike other nootropics, which often work by increasing neurotransmitter synthesis in, in neural signaling, methylene blue improves memory by increasing brain cell respiration, or how the brain cell utilizes oxygen. Studies show dramatic increases in cellular oxygen consumption and glucose uptake when using methylene blue. It increases CMRO2, or cerebral metabolic rate, through increased activity in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Methylene blue functions as an alternative electron carrier in the electron transport chain in mitochondria. It accepts electrons from NADH and transports them to cytochrome C. Now, cytochrome complex, or cytochrome C, is a component of the electron transport chain in mitochondria, playing a role in apoptosis and as an antioxidant. Methylene blue also stimulates glucose metabolism. Taken together, increases in CMRO2 and glucose uptake means that methylene blue elevates oxygen consumption, which helps glucose increase ATP production. Increases in ATP production provides more cellular energy for better overall brain function, including cognition, mood, and memory. And the second way, methylene blue is an antioxidant. It is a unique mechanism of action that is fundamentally different from traditional antioxidants. During cellular respiration, the first free radical formed inside a cell is superoxide. Methylene blue binds to superoxide and reduces it to water. It stops this oxidative cascade at its very beginning, before it gets a chance to do damage. So, think of methylene blue as having a dual property. First, it increases cellular energy production, which normally leads to oxidative stress. And second, it eliminates this ox oxidative stress, making it a metabolic enhancer and an antioxidant. Researchers tested methylene blue in animal models of neurological disease. First, the researchers used retinone, which is a potent pesticide, which causes severe dopamine depletion in the part of the brain associated with Parkinson's. Methylene blue rescued the brain cell mitochondria from the damaging effects of this toxin by donating electrons in the electron transport chain broken by rotenone, essentially bypassing the broken transport chain with donated electrons as an alternative electron carrier. Methylene blue also counters cerebral ischemia reperfusion damage. The tissue damage that is caused by the blood supply returning all of a sudden back to the tissue after a lack of oxygen. Just like can occur during traumatic brain injury, for example. Methylene blue accomplished this by rerouting mitochondrial electron transfer. This means that methylene blue dramatic countered the behavioral, neuro neurochemical, and neuropathological impairment 
found in Parkinson's disease. Now, low-dose methylene blue supplementation provides memory-enhancing effects in animals and humans. It works as an antidepressant, as anti-aging, it helps dementia, Huntington's, and Alzheimer's. Methylene blue increases uh, low blood pressure, it improves cognition in healthy people, it boosts mitochondrial function, it is antimicrobial, it can eliminate fear, and even slow skin aging. Research shows that methylene blue is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor with a preference for muscarinic acetylcholine, acetylcholine receptors, meaning methylene blue prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine and making it more available to your brain. Methylene blue is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, or MAOI. It inhibits MAOA more than MAOB but inhibits both at large doses. Now, one study in 1987 showed that 15 milligrams per day of methylene blue was a potent antidepressant in those with severe depression. Another study with 31 bipolar disorder patients compared 300 milligrams per day of methylene blue with 15 milligrams per day. The patients were also on lithium treatment. The study showed that the 300 milligram dose of methylene blue was a useful addition to lithium in the long-term treatment of manic depressive psychosis, and patients were significantly less depressed. Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia are associated with the buildup of the protein tau. Clinical trials show that methylene blue inhibits tau formation and is under consideration as a treatment for Alzheimer's. Methylene blue has an inhibitory action on the CGMP pathway and affects other molecular events closely, closely related to the progression of Alzheimer's. Methylene blue boosts neuron resistance to the formation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles and helps repair impairments in mitochondrial function and cellular metabolism. Now, research also, sh also shows that cholinergic serotonergic and glutaminergic systems may also play important roles in the development of Alzheimer's and other cognitive disorders. Methylene blue provides beneficial effects in mediating these pathways. This is particularly significant because most existing treatments for Alzheimer's can only prevent the disease before it's diagnosed. But methylene blue shows promise in delaying the effects of Alzheimer's and dementia after it's diagnosed which is pretty remarkable. Research shows that methylene blue is an effective anti-aging nootropic. Methylene blue increases mitochondrial complex 4 by 30 percent. It enhances cellular oxygen consumption by 37 to 70 percent. It increases heme synthesis and it reverses premature senescence caused by hydrogen peroxide and cadmium. Now, this is what this means. Methylene blue is considered a redox agent, meaning it cycles between oxidizing and reduced forms. This cycling by methylene blue helps block oxidant production in the brain in cell mitochondria. Now, mitochondrial complex four is the last enzyme in the respiratory electron transport chain of mit mito uh, mitochondria, the last step in synthesis of ATP, your cellular and mitochondrial source of energy. And iron, or heme, is an essential element and participates in oxygen transport, DNA synthesis, and electron transport. Heme synthesis begins in the mitochondria. Every cell requires heme to function properly. In senescence, or biological aging, is the gradual deterioration of cellular function. And it's caused by the telomere shortening that triggers DNA damage in response to reactive oxygen species, hydrogen peroxide, cadmium, and other toxins. Methylene blue helps prevent premature senescence or premature cell death. So that's why methylene blue is considered an anti-aging nootropic. Animal studies have shown that a single low dose of methylene blue enhances long-term contextual memory, 
This type of memory is the conscious recall of the source and the circumstances of that specific memory. Other studies show that methylene blue in low doses taken after the event helps memory retention of the event. A study done reveals why this works. In this study, rats received one milligram per kilogram of methylene blue post-training, that was after the training, uh, for three days. The researchers then measured cytochrome C oxidation in the participants' brains. The idea was to determine if the increase in metabolic energy was behind the memory-enhancing qualities of methylene blue. The study found that the methylene blue-treated group, brain cytochrome oxidase activity was 70% higher than in the placebo-treated group. The findings suggested that repeated post-training supplementation of methylene blue improves memory consolidation. And this memory boost is due to increased metabolic capacity in brain regions that require more energy during, during discrimination learning. Methylene blue as a nootropic will likely feel different than any other supplement you've ever tried. When reading or studying, once you're done, you should feel like you fully understand the subject material and you'll be able to use what you learned in the future. Methylene blue seems to facilitate an understanding of something on the first try. Many neurohackers report that the biggest nootropic effect they experience with methylene blue is after the fact learning. You take in the information and it's like your brain sorts through the material and stores it in a form you can easily access later. Methylene blue has the uncanny ability to rewire your brain to forget about the negative associations you have as, of a situation. And it only retains the positive aspects of, aspects of that memory. Now some report that methylene blue makes you feel young again. It eliminates social anxiety, you feel more focused and more content. Workouts seem easier because you have more energy. Your mitochondria are, mitochondria are energized. And you may find that recovering from workouts is easier. Methylene blue helps eliminate stress, so you have more energy in any situation with a relaxed state of mind. And one recurring theme from many is improved sleep when using methylene blue. Now, we've got research into methylene blue going back over 140 years. If you want to see uh, more detail on this research and you want to see individual studies, please go to neutropicsexpert.com and search for methylene blue or click on the link below this video. You'll see more studies on how methylene blue is used to treat Alzheimer's disease. You will see a study on how methylene blue improves memory and another study that on methylene blue and how it helps bipolar disorder. So to see these studies in detail, please go to neutropicsexpert.com and search for methylene blue. Recommended safe doses based on clinical studies with animals and humans ranges from a half a milligram to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So a 90 kilogram person or 200 pound person translates to 45 to 360 milligrams of methylene blue per day. Now 45 milligrams of methylene blue is a safe starting dose. But 360 milligrams is much too high in my opinion, opinion, even if you're 200 pounds. So if you're just starting with methylene blue, please start with the lowest recommended dose, which is 45 milligrams a day, and see how you feel. The, the bottom line is that there's no true recommended dose for methylene blue. Again, my recommendation is start with the lowest dose, which is a half a milligram per kilogram, and see how you react. Now, methylene blue is water-soluble, so you don't need to take it with the meal or a healthy fat like some nootropics. Methylene blue has a half-life of about five hours, and this is backed up by clinical studies, too. I see some information out there that says that the uh, half-life is 12 hours. It's not so. It's about five hours. So you can dose it twice a day if you want. You'll probably find that you don't need to. Methylene blue is famous for turning urine blue, 
but for most neurohackers, your urine will only stain blue at doses roughly exceeding 500 micrograms. Some recommend preventing this urine turning blue by mixing methylene blue with ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, for three hours before taking it. Methylene blue is also available as a doctor-administered injection for therapeutic use, typically used to treat diseases like malaria or with anti-cancer therapy. Now, methylene blue shows a hermetic dose response with opposite effects at low and high doses. In other words, lower doses of methylene blue work well as a nootropic, but high doses do not because it can be potentially uh, it can potentially steal electrons away from the electron transport chain, disrupting the redox balance and acting as a pro-oxidant instead of an antioxidant, which is bad. Adverse effects of methylene blue also come from chemical impurities. Now, even know that even pharmaceutical USP grade methylene blue can contain impurities like arsenic aluminum, cadmium, mercury, and lead. Now, at low doses, these contaminants are not that big of a problem, and we're talking about tiny doses here. But higher doses can result in the accumulation of these toxins in your cells. Side effects with methylene blue are rare when dosed under 2 milligrams per kilogram. But they can include stomach pain, chest pain, dizziness, headaches, sweating, confusion, high blood pressure, shortness of breath, accelerated heartbeat, uh, tremor, skin turning blue, urine turning blue or green, depending on the original color of your urine, reduction of red blood cells or jaundice, which has only been reported in infants, and monoamine oxidase inhibition, or MAOI, becomes a big problem at around two milligrams per kilogram of methylene blue. So, if you're using antidepressants or any anti-anxiety medications that affect serotonin, you should not use methylene blue because using methylene blue with one of these medications could cause serotonin syndrome. This includes SSRIs and MAOIs, and I've got a list of them detailed on the website, nootropicsexpert.com. If you're taking antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds, please don't use methylene blue. And don't use methylene blue if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding. Methylene blue comes as a liquid and in crystalline powder form. Industrial grade and chemical grade methylene blue is sold as a dye or a stain, and it consists of more than 8 to 11 percent of various contaminants and should not be used as a nootropic. Only pharmaceutical USP grade methylene blue should be used as a nootropic. Ask for a certificate of analysis, which should include the amount of contaminants in that dose of methylene blue, such as arsenic, cadmium, aluminum, mercury, and lead. So my nootropics expert recommendation for methylene blue is a half a milligram to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. And that's my report on methylene blue. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for methylene blue, or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions, or you want to share your experience using methylene blue, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post on NootropicsExpert.com. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. Now, if you want to see more videos and all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I try to put up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. And I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.